Welcome back to this theme day on the theme of 5G here at Erik Penser Bank. Uh, my name is Alexander Wilvall. I'm a research uh, analyst here at the Erik Penser Bank. And I have now the pleasure to welcome Per Lindberg and Jon Ullmark. Per is uh, CEO of uh, Randplan and uh, Jon is the Chief Strategy Officer and also responsible for software development. Very welcome and uh, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you. We are very pleased to be here, very grateful. We presented here on the 2nd of September last year, so we're quite familiar with the setup. Uh, today I have uh, Jun with me. Jun is the head of software development and he will take you through some illuminating examples uh, later on, so-called use cases. And he will also explain why we embrace openness, in the true sense of the word and also how we intend to capitalize on the power of cloud computing, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Before then, it is my honor <coughs> to introduce you to Ramplan. After that, I will um, brief you on some of the enablers, what is needed for 5G and the overarching vision the nerve center of society. And finally, but perhaps most importantly, on the private wireless, dedicated, tailored-made wireless networks, mainly for industrial applications. Something that we truly believe we will uh, help to perfect. Perfecting wireless networks Incidentally, is a mission statement that we want to convey and we want to be associated with. A simple intro to RAM plan. We develop, we market, we sell software tools that help to build, design, optimize, and indeed increasingly also to operate wireless networks. Of all nature, importantly. We do cellular, we do 4G, 5G, we do uh, Wi-Fi, we do um, small cells, large cells, any combination thereof. What makes us particularly unique in this era, unlike any one of our peers, we can handle both inside the buildings, within the walls of buildings, as well as in the close proximity to these buildings outside, using the same software algorithm, using the same user interface, using the same logic in visualize wireless waves. And this is particularly poignant when private wireless networks are now being built. We will come to that shortly. We are the masters of precise design, where 5G matters the most in dense urban areas. We tend to refer to HetNet, to categorize that element, indoor, outdoor, in unison. We will revert to that relatively soon. We are very ambitious in terms of R&D. As a matter of fact, Ramplan originates from University of Sheffield. We are located just outside Cambridge in the United Kingdom. That's our operational headquarters. And at this moment in time, it varies a bit, uh, we have uh, anything between 70 and 75 full-time equivalents in our operations. We are independent. Um, we will explain why this uh, needs to be emphasized. And we are listed on uh, NASDAQ, the uh, Stockholm version thereof. We enjoy a comprehensive, diverse, and indeed eclectic customer base. Many familiar names, operators, 
telecom equipment makers, system integrators, and also what we often refer to as neutral hosts, those who uh, own and run, for instance, the network in a stadium, a shopping mall, uh, a um, airport outfit, etc. So that's RAM plan. What is then 5G? Uh, to begin with, uh, likely then, in a historical perspective, what it brings to the table beyond what we have had before is chiefly a plethora of new applications never ever before mastered in a cellular wireless setting. And this is graphically portrayed here. More specifically, this means that machine-to-machine -machine and machine-to-human communications will now be arguably the greatest focal area of the next 10 to 20 years. That in and by itself, the right hand on this chart, means from a RAM plan and our peers' perspective that the importance of very, very careful planning, think before you act, think before you build, will be catapulted compared with the past. Because a machine connection cannot be jeopardized, compromised. Well, we can wait a second or two seconds for the PowerPoint presentation to be receiving our smartphone or laptop, etc. But if you want to control a robot or a drone in an industrial setting, then surely that will not be acceptable. So this means from a RAM plan perspective, and indeed our peers, that the need of sophisticated tools that we represent will be heightened without a shed of doubt. Turning then to um, the scientific part of the history, in some way a tribute to the discoveries of two Brits, Michael Faraday experimentally and James Clerk Maxwell theoretically in the 19th century. And this is probably I would say, from my scientific past, this is probably the most important discovery human beings have ever made, without which we would not benefit from the internet, to say one thing. We would not even be able to communicate either wirelessly or wirelinely. Now, we humans, we have certain centers, sensors that are able to de detect a portion, a small portion of this spectrum, and that's depicted here in the middle, the visible light. Now, further to the left, we depict where we currently operate in 4G and 5G, and soon then in 6G. And as you can see at the bottom, these wavelengths are much, much longer than what we can detect with our eyes. It's actually almost a million difference, a factor of a million. You have to multiply the frequency, a typical frequency of, say, cellular, by a factor of one million. It has to undulate one million faster for us to be able to detect them. So this helps to explain why a company like Ramplan is needed, because we visualize what we cannot detect with our eyes. And then, just for illustrative purposes, further to the right here, we have X-rays and gamma rays, and as we all know, they don't penetrate the body, at least not the skeleton, etc. Why? Because these waves, they undulate so fast, so they have a lot of energy, and the more energetic they are, the faster they are absorbed in the 
in the ambience. Not all forms of 5G are born equal, nor do they behave equally. So often the term 5G is too generalized. Two extreme examples. Low frequencies, here labeled sub 6 gigahertz, they are not so much perturbed by physical objects. They travel relatively easily. They can bend and curve, etc. The limitation is more on the capacity compared with the high end of the spectrum, also known as millimeter wave, which has the precise opposite characteristics. So they complement each other. Let me then briefly explain why there is much more capacity and throughput in the uh, high end of this spectrum. Think about me when I now speak to you. The faster I move my lips, the more information I can convey to you. But if I hardly move my lips, there's very little information I can convey per time unit. No difference here. But they do complement each other, and as you may surmise, as we move towards the higher end of this spectrum, the need for radio planning will just be enhanced because the blockages are going to be magnified. So far, as we will show you soon, the vast majority, I would say 90-95% of what is categorized as 5G has been deployed in the low end of this spectral range. I, where 5G to date has not been too dissimilar from 4G. But that will change as we move to the more intricate examples and applications. One of which being uh, the fabric of society, the nerve center of society. Many venues, buildings will also capitalize on 5G arguably to a greater extent than Wi-Fi has been deployed and employed in the offices of the past. What's important for us and for our customers and our partners is the blockages that physical obstacles will generate. And this is our expertise at Ramplan. We understand how different forms of material affects the natural propagation of radio waves. Nothing is more exciting, nothing compares in terms of uh, feverish activities than the industrial use capitalizing on exploiting the capabilities of 5G. And I will take you through some reasons for this now. First and foremost, industrial applications, also known as enterprise solutions, attracts a number of new players. Not only mobile network operators, the traditional source of service provision, not only telecom equipment makers, the Ericsson and Nokias and the Samsungs of this world, but also system integrators, enterprises themselves, and many other actors. In the middle here, you see also that there can be a number of um, variations. Also, there could be one actor here that actually runs the network. There could be someone else who builds the network, etc. Uh, so we see a lot of collaboration 
between actors here highlighted. It's not necessarily the um, head-on competition. Uh, there's a lot of uh, mutual benefits here to, to be shared. Showcases uh, can be witnessed on almost a daily, if not hourly basis. You can Google uh, private wireless, etc. And this is just a snapshot uh, uh, to uh, convey the uh, level of activity, amongst others. One champion is uh, the famous company Bosch in Germany, who has articulated, actually, I think it's more than a year ago now, that it will deploy 5G, and actually in combination with Wi-Fi, in virtually all its plants worldwide. And thereafter, importantly, it also wants to monetize that as it shares its knowledge and its understanding with other in industrial companies. A question that naturally pops up then is uh, how 5G interrelates with Wi-Fi. And uh, I would say at this moment in time, 5G is largely complementary. It caters much more for supreme reliability, excellent security compared with Wi-Fi. Wi-5 is more best effort, but we hasten to add that over time now with Wi-5, 6 and 7, etc., Wi-Fi in the same vein will become more similar to cellular uh, because it's, it's, it's going to inherit and, and uh, emulate some of the novel features of 5G. Increasingly obvious to increasingly many, there are enormous benefits from the use of private wireless networks dedicated to specific use cases, especially then within enterprises. A premium segment, by the way. Uh, these uh, enterprises have a fairly quick return on incremental investments. To sum up then, uh, some numbers. It's still... Uh, in an embryonic phase, early days, the uh, private wireless incremental investment segment here. But we have strong reasons to believe that it will be very, very material. And if we were to extend this, say, up until the late 30s, it could well be that the private wireless segment will match, if not even surpass, that of the public. Public here, we mean the traditional networks, the telecom operators that we're all familiar with. Nokia has undertaken a very meticulous study of uh, the potential, and the numbers are staggering. If you look at the bottom here, the total number of additional sites, where you then have to have something equivalent to a traditional base station, is anything between 14 and 15 million. And that figure in and by itself is twice, read my lips, is twice the number of macro base stations installed to date worldwide. It's not exactly a like for like comparison uh, since enterprise networks will be smaller, but it's a gigantic figure. And what we want to highlight here, as you see in green, uh, sorry, in, in yellow, I should say, um, is the um, disproportionate uh, dominance of industrial manufacturing and warehouses where we have the most exacting requirements. Finally then, before I hand over to Yoon, RAM plan is ideally placed to help our customers become successful in private wireless. We can handle both the indoor and the outdoor in full unison, in full harmony, etc. We can then, by extension, eliminate any negative interferences between the public and the private networks. So simply put, put without being too theatrical, private wireless to RAM plan is like your favorite hand in your favorite glove. Over to you. So thank you. I will jump straight into it with an example here of private wireless uh, outdoor. So it's a macro example. And what we can see here, it's actually LTE, so you have to bear with me. I will come more to 5G in a, 
in a moment. But what you can see here is a number of small cells deployed outside in a, in a city environment. Uh, it's a, a campus, and as we can see, this is from the US. It's CBRS, so it's therefore a form of private wireless. But uh, you can see here the result of uh, our tool being used here with um, input geographical data. And uh, on the bottom left, you can see the signal strength emanating from these uh, outdoor small cells. And to the right, you can see the throughput, so the capacity of, of this particular system. So this is something not so much known that we can do in Ramplan. It's outdoor, it's macro, but we can do this fully well as long as the area is not too large. We, uh, we are happy to do this for a city-wide deployment, for instance, but not for a, a, com a whole country. Then our very precise uh, propagation models are not the best tool to use. We are much more known for the indoor. And here I'd like to share with you an example of a, an indoor project, a fairly typical one, I would say, for the not the most prestigious. I will show you some of those as well, but this is a kind of a uh, second uh, level uh, building here. It's in a hotel with uh, about 20 floors. And uh, it actually has also has a DAS 4G system at the moment, but um, we'll come to that. So the issue we have here is that not all buildings have complete CAD files and so on. So we typically have to build up the, the environment, in this case the building, by designing it. And that takes time. And uh, so we have focused quite a lot on reducing that time by automating these tasks. And uh, we have introduced uh, quite recently a number of very interesting features that helps designers do this. Uh, perhaps the most interesting one is called IFR, Intelligent Floor Recognition. It's a machine learning uh, uh, model. So what we input is a simple floor plan. It can actually be a picture of a floor plan. It can be a drawing of a floor plan. But we are able, through machine learning, to recognize the individual elements, classify this correctly, and automatically create a CAD floor out of that. So that's the building. And you can then stack floors on top of each other and create the building. Then we come to the network design. And of course, this is the, the core knowledge that the radio planners have. But we are also trying to automate here. And we have a feature called ACO, Automatic Cell Optimizer, which uh, can take into uh, several different KPIs or performance measurements you want to receive and automatically find the uh, optimal location for the antenna, thus saving uh, not only time, but also eventually cost for the one who's deploying the network. So typical uh, usage, uh, or as you say, use case for, for this uh, building nowadays could be that you want to add a 5G system to your 4G. And uh, we also have some very, very efficient tools for that. Uh, one is called power sharing. And when you want to do that, when you want to either combine several operators or you want to have 4G and 5G, you have to really tune the, the network in order to achieve that. And we have automated that, which is uh, a major uh, benefit of using RAM plan. Let's now turn to one of the more prestigious uh, projects. So this is a, a stadium. Uh, it's actually an illustration we did some time ago, so it's uh, it's more of a pretty picture than a real-life uh, stadium, this one. Normally, you would have perhaps the, the radio radiating towards the, the seating area, not sort of from the back wall here. But it's a nice picture, so I thought I'd include it. Uh, the point here is that we have won many, many of these projects uh, worldwide. We have done stadiums for the Olympics, both uh, Tokyo and uh, now China. We have done Super Bowl stadiums. Uh, we have done, uh, or we will do, I should say, uh, we'll have done a World Cup uh, when that uh, runs in, in Qatar. So, and, uh, but this particular example is uh, 5G small cells. And uh, you can ask yourself well, why we have been successful in this. And the reason is we have introduced also a lot of automation here when it comes to modeling particularly the seating areas. Uh, you can understand that these are, I mean, it's almost like steps or, or a staircase that you find. But it's very, very important to have extremely good performance here and uh, to be able to model this, uh, and not only the seating and the environment, but also sometimes even the crowd, even the people who are in the stadium. So we have that. We also have various um, uh, ways of um, 
providing reports and, and efficient ways to showing that you are compliant with the desired K KPIs here. And last but not least, of course, our, our main thing is that we have our own propagation models and these are very, very accurate and have proven to be so, even against measurement data. So, but this is 5G small cells, that's perhaps not uh, the state of the art the most current, so let me show you one that's a little bit more state of the art. Uh, so this is uh, this could very well be actually one of the World Cup stadiums uh, uh, that uh, where the World Cup will take place. Um, but the point here I wanted to show is a use case again. This is uh, fine tuning a system. So here we have a massive MIMO, uh, fully um, optical fiber uh, systems, a very very advanced system I would say. Um, as you can see, uh, probably a little bit hard to see here, but there's a hundred megahertz bandwidth that we've been working with here. And actually quite a lot of sectors, I think around 30 sectors, 28 sectors here. But with that kind of bandwidth, you cannot fit in all the, uh, all the channels you need. So the risk is that you will get interference. And that's what can be seen here on the left hand side. Uh, that's uh, uh, the signal to noise ratio. So it's a measure of the, of the interference. And actually here, red is very good and the blue is not so good and green in between here. So you can see that there are some very good areas and there are also some slightly problematic areas. So on the right hand side then you can see the resulting throughput and that looks very, very nice actually. You can see it's a, it's a high band width here. We are up to, I uh, struggle to read it, but it's very high number. So even though this system has some interference, we still cannot improve upon the performance more than this here. But you can see nicely that this kind of turquoise areas correspond to the blue ones on the left hand side. So that's, that's an example of a high value, very prestigious case we, we do. Now we come to my favorite area. This is the, the cloud. And this is where I spend a lot of my time currently uh, with the development work. So we have built from scratch a brand new cloud native platform uh, that fully takes advantage of the latest technology as an architecture purely built for the cloud. So we have very efficient small microservices that uh, can scale up and scale down depending on the needs so we can fully exploit the power of the cloud so to speak. And why is that important for us? Um, one part is of course distribution of this. Having a desktop, desktop tool means you have to have a license. It's uh, complicated to install and so on. With the cloud, of course, you log in, you have everything available. So that's a great benefit for users. And uh, you want to bring in more people, then you can easily do that. But more to the point for us, it allows us to run our propagation models very, very efficiently. Because these things are very good for parallelization. So you can, if you have a stadium with hundreds of antennas, you can actually calculate them one by one in parallel. So that saves a lot, lot of, of time. And also it allows us to exploit some of the machine learning uh, uh, approaches we have. So um, we have very, very interesting things coming here. We will preview this in Barcelona at the end of this month at the Mobile World Congress. Just a little bit on where we see this going. So currently we are using this to enhance our other tools. But we think gradually things will transition and it will be more and more cloud. And uh, to offer this, we have built this so it's very flexible. So we can provide this as a service that we provide to customers or we can deploy it at the customer's uh, premises. And we can also use this to power other people's planning tools, for instance, if there's a, a need for that. Quick slide on ORAN. Uh, it's been talked about previously, I think, in this uh, uh, seminar. Uh, it's very important for us. Uh, we believe in ORAN. We are members. Uh, it allows smaller companies like Ramplan to compete uh, with the largest uh, players in this industry. Uh, it, uh, it's really focused on uh, the best tool for the best for the intended use cases and. and more to the point, it allows us really to integrate with all the key players in this industry. So that's a crucial membership that we have. And we are currently exploiting this. We are looking at something called the RIC, the RAN Intelligent Controller, which is, a, to my mind, the most important part of ORAN. 
it can be viewed as kind of the nexus, the integration point in the, in the RAN. And here is where there are standardized APIs. So a company like RAMPLAN, we can develop our optimization uh, algorithms. We can deploy them as apps. In this uh, case, they're called either XApp or R apps, depending on where they reside in the RIC. But this gives us the opportunity to scale across all the, all the operators that have deployed a RIC and uh, without having long integration projects and so on. So it's very, very important. And also, we actually provide something fairly unique here with the data we produce from the planning. So we, we really have something to contribute here in terms, in terms of optimization. So with that slide, I'm handing back to Per. Thank you. Thank you, Jun. Uh, this is brilliant. And uh, as a concluding remark, uh, we are independent, unlike uh, at least one of our peers. This means that we can help our customers to select which vendor, which supplier's equipment is best fit in each and every environment. And that will become objectively, neutrally, and that will become even more paramount for our customers when the antennas become more intelligent. You can steer the antennas in space and time. So this is something that uh, we want to um, increasingly assertively uh, convey to our customers uh, to their benefits. We have plenty of videos on the website. Uh, this is just a selection of them for anyone who wants to dig deeper. But uh, given the time constraints, I think we open up, up for the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, Per and Jon, for this very informative presentation. Uh, mm -hmm. I would like to begin the questions uh, with uh, perhaps what you touched on uh, at the end of the presentation. Uh, regarding your independence and uh, the possibility to, to uh, guide your customers to the right suppliers or perhaps equipment and, and other, other things. Um, are you totally... Uh, uh, is it uh, totally possible for you to work with all equipment uh, providers and in all settings? Are you... Uh, uh, your systems yeah. free across, across the spectrum, so to say? I, I would say... Yes, in general. Now, to add to that, uh, our major competitor is owned by a very large company which competes with Ericsson, Nokia, Samsung, Huawei, ZTE, and all the others. Whether that company, that Colossus, is going to work with us, given that it has its in-house tool, that remains to be seen. But with that caveat, yes, we can work with virtually everyone. And virtually everyone would like to work with us because they can trust that we are not compromising anything. Uh, and when it comes to these uh, obviously very prestigious contracts, such as these stadiums uh, that you described, and also going forward when it comes to the World Cup, how important... Uh, can you describe the drivers for you winning these contracts and how, uh, how you achieved this? I let you... In, uh, Step in here. On it, it's, uh, it's been a gradual uh, uh, win for us, I would say, and it's all down to the efficiency. Some of our customers have actually compared Ramplan against mm -hmm. other competitors and found that we have, in some cases, 2x or uh, twice the efficiency when it comes to the modeling part and, and also better accuracy. So, um, in fact, we have actually won some products where there has been a previous design by a competitor and that okay. has proven not to be up to, to the promise, and then we had to redo it in RAM plan. So, so, so based on, on the quality of the product, basically. Yes, I would and, say. Uh, but also going forward, I mean, these uh, very sort of high-profile contracts must be beneficial when it comes to uh, approaching new customers oh, yeah. oh, yes. in yep, the future. Definitely, B because then, then we are um, almost indispensable in many cases in, yep. in terms of everything from what you alluded to, productivity, how quickly you can actually do the design, but not least the accuracy. And think about the stadium, uh, like, uh, you know, like the Super Bowl stadium, etc. 
it does have elements of both indoor because there's some blockage, but it's also you know, at, 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 uh, at the uppermost parts, it's also open space, etc. And this is something that Ramplan can, can handle much, much better than anyone else. Okay. Um, and uh, when it comes to the uh, sort of, say, general public perception of 5G and how, how the rollout is going to affect our lives, it's a lot of focus on uh, perhaps uh, consumer uh, applications and so on. But you um, pointed a lot towards industrial applications. Oh, oh yes, yes. Is that going to be the, the main driver? And then we see sort yeah. of the spillover on consumer products. So how should we view uh, this from an outside perspective? I would even say, uh, without exaggerating, I think... 5G is increasingly associated with enterprise applications. And, and frankly and candidly and honestly, consumers in the main will not see much difference between a high-performing 4G network and today's 5G network. Not much. But the plethora of applications that industrial champions can take on that is going to be a magnificent increment in terms of activities in the whole industry. Look at Ericsson and Nokia, for instance. I mean, they articulate now in every single quarterly interim report that they have tremendous impetus in, in this space. And besides, this is a premium segment. And this is whole incremental. What's good for us and for many others is that this is greenfield. These are networks that are built from scratch. So it's not repairing and modernizing. It, it's do it first and, and foremost now. Now, in order to catalyze and energize that market, we, together with our partners and customers, we need to demonstrate that it works in certain settings. It's known as use cases or reference cases, etc., and case studies. And that we want to do together with our prominent customers and partners. Do you see any? You mentioned Bosch as an example here. Uh, do you see any specific sort of uh, traditional industries who are perhaps further ahead when it comes to uh, embracing these new possibilities? You can, for instance, warehousing. We are, mm. you know, or whatever you want. Yeah. Warehousing and smart factors. I think it varies between the different markets. Some markets are much more mature. Yes. And we also see that there are different trends there. In some markets, we have been uh, selected by the end customer who is exploiting this themselves. And uh, in other markets, it's through the regular channels, system integrators and the OEMs. Yes. And uh, th these markets have uh, come into focus a lot during the last few years with the explosion in e-commerce and so on. And the logistical solutions are very much in focus. Uh, has uh, this sort of speeded up the, the, the attention towards these yes. possibilities, would you say? I think yeah. also the, sorry, Perry, but I think also the security aspect of it is yes. a, a very important driver here for many companies. That perhaps more so than performance at, at this point, even though I, I still believe that the low latency and other use cases will be more important in the future. Um, and if you look at the hyperscalers, also known as internet giants, their main emphasis now is on the industrial, sp industrial space and enterprise, etc. They want to move their data centers, the Microsofts, the Googles, the AWS of this world, closer to the proximity of the factories and the enterprises of the future, in order also to have much quicker response times, in order to control the robots and the drones yep. in, in a very timely manner. Uh, would you say when it comes to cloud capacity, do you see that as being able to keep up more on a general level uh, yeah. um, with, with the demand for 5G solutions? So, so yes, so far, yes, I would say definitely. Yep. I think uh, the industry is perhaps underutilizing okay. the cloud infrastructure that's yep. already out there, um, mainly for security concerns, sometimes regulatory reasons. But um, yeah. All right, sounds good. Yes. Um, and uh, to uh, sort of uh, finish off here, I would uh, like to ask, wh where would you see Ramplan in perhaps a little bit longer perspective, say five or ten years? We saw these charts of, of a potential spending into these technologies. Uh, how do you see yourselves capitalizing on this? We are then a much, much broader company. We do much more than traditional uh, planning tools, PC-based. We are then running in the cloud. We can probably then also offer services on a usage basis 
which will, which will clearly open up new opportunities for us. We also believe that uh, we are going to be able to include components like those that Jun alluded to now. We are going to be a component, the recommendation planning simulation component within a network management system. We also believe that we, together with uh, partners, can provide expert services, etc. We will confine ourselves to software and services. We are not going to sell hardware like our biggest competitor does. Um, so we are not going to, to compromise that element. But clearly we have much, much more to contribute. We are going to capitalize on the cloud. We are going to provide services on a usage basis. And we are also going to be a component within the broader systems architectures. Okay, thank you very much, Per and Jon, for this presentation. And best of luck in the future. Thank you. And thank uh, you. to all you who are watching, uh, welcome back in a few minutes for the continuation of this 5G theme day here at Eric Penser Bank. Thank you. Thank you.